the time so, so I've got about 15 minutes less than I should. Alright. Really? I'm going to go off Evening, Hello. Quiet. <laughs> okay. um, so, my talk's going to be around uh, integrating the arts, amazingly. Um, so, it's more about how you can influence the culture of the fitness business you're working, um, sort of the obstacles you hit in a day to day fashion, and hopefully how you can overcome them. Um, and basically, yeah, UX is a more accepted thing than growing your business. So, my experience is more with sort of like small medium enterprises, but you can sort of apply some of the same thing to a team in quite smaller areas of the business and work. So hopefully you'll work with some guys. So in order to make things better, you need to know where you're starting from. So this is one of many sort of UX maturity models. Um, I'm not going to say thank you for anything. Say it's on the So basically what you've got is on the right hand side you've got no pointer since I'm working. Um, on the right side, you've got distributed, which is sort of like everything's user centered, every department knows what they're doing, so you've got your big companies like Twitter, etc. Um, and way down at the other end, the scale, you've got unintentional, which is no one gives a crap about it, doesn't know what it is, and they just build the stuff because IT said they can do this. So, what we're trying to do is move from left to right to get UX as a more user centered design organization uh, idea. Uh, and where we generally start in this uh, this sort of point in the business side worked in is about the expert area in the middle. So it's when they've employed someone as a UX uh, and they're starting up on that sort of journey to make things better for users. So the first one there, uh, as I mentioned, was the unintentional one. So there's no recognition of UX at all, no prototype so in the journey mapping, all that lovely stuff that we get to do. Um, and there's nothing that sort of creates an intentional design. So everything that comes out at the end is a bit of a gamble, it's usually not the work that's not it. Um, and like I said, it's usually driven by IT constraints and business goals, and that's it. Anyone who sort of could approach UX just because of what's it wants to produce, they don't think it's worth it. Uh, we've got the self self-referential stage, which is uh, the people who work in the company say they do UX uh, and they boast about it and they don't really do it because all they think is that they themselves are their own users. Um, so, example of one of the companies I worked at, we specialised in insurance for the over 50s and everyone in a meeting would be under 40 and giving their opinions on how they work. So, absolutely no one has any idea of what they do should be giving the users because they think of themselves as those people. Um, it's also not seen at this stage to be really important to the business and there's usually no budget, no time, no resources to do it. And then they realise that it's something they hear the UX buzzword, we need to get on with this and play the concert. Um, so all of a sudden you then have an individual or a small team of people in there who know what needs to be done, need to speak to people about what they need. Uh, and you will get to do some of that work, but not really all the time. Um, it has to fit around everything else. The business already has priorities, they're not willing to just switch over and go, oh yeah, we're not going to do everything we've done for the last 10 years, and just think that because you say it's better to speak to humans. So you've got to try and work your way into one of these different angles. So this is kind of where we're starting from. Is everyone in the unintentional space? Don't because you're here, so you shouldn't be. Um, can you relate to the sort of expert self-referential things? I'm just going to speak to you directly, and we can cut this down to the next week. Okay, um, so we need to level up our business. This is the only good gift I've got. Uh, it's going to be <laughs> down, I was going to put a slide down there. Um, so, in order to move ourselves up this scale, we've got sort of two main aims for integrating the UX. So we need to change the organisational goals, which sounds quite a lot, and to be fair it is. Um, but we need to elevate the focus on user of users up to the same level as like the strategic and financial information of the business. Um, so users become central to the process after the involvement of people's usual products in discovery, design, development, and so on. Um, 
And when you start doing that, the business begins to understand that the users are the most important variable that is successful. Uh, and the other thing um, to do that is to change the balance of power. So this sort of focuses on middle management all the way up to the CEO, depending on who you can get some access to or who you can work through. Um, again, it requires the participation of the users and the sign the decision making process. Uh, which limits management's control, which they really don't like. Uh, so it's fun to be that way as well. So we've got to sort of shift that balance of power toward the design, towards user centric design, uh, to then be able to change the organisation we've got. So we'll look at this one first. But again, like I said, organisation change, not a small thing, quite a, quite a lot to do. Um, it's not easy, not really a one man job, but it's part of this larger thing. So, I heard it called the noble class of my business, it's not mine. That's a nice thing. Um, so if you're going to do this, you need to sort of have a distinct intention that you want this sort of UX process to be filtered throughout the business. So the whole business will benefit from it, and everyone will work with it, from it. But you have to sort of walk and walk even if you can't just yet. Um, so you're not just Intending to change the environment you work in, but it's the people you work with and how they work as well. Um, and broadly speaking, it requires lots of little changes over time, and that needs to be constantly supported by positive results. So, as you probably guess, it's not very really easy. You have to be quite principled and stubborn uh, to see it through. Um, and it's not for everyone, and there's no shame in that. It's always better to have tried and to have failed. Um, and there'll always be uh, resistance to change, and that's actually a healthy part of the process. So if you manage it effectively, it sort of strengthens the changes that you're trying to make, but if you ignore it, it can undermine all the So uh, the, the problem with not doing this um, is the fact that the future of your entire company is going to be a state, which sounds a bit bold, but if you look at people like blockbusters, uh, people on the ground anymore, who have bought Netflix for 50 million in 2000 and they didn't, they got Netflix is worth 60 million. So, off on that. Um, and if you're, if you're going to be sort of, if you're going to be a US designer, you have to sort of have this is the first but always wanted to solve these problems. Um, and changing a company's culture, a pretty big problem, it's not going to be easy. Um, and it most definitely is going to be solved. Um, like I said earlier, it's hard to fail, but it's worse than uh, trying to succeed. So, the next thing is how we get on with this. So, the first step we need to do is to remove ourselves from this concealed sort of container that no one knows what you do to a familiar position. So, um, we need to make ourselves familiar to people that we work with, obviously, as we will do. But even more so, it's the people that we don't work with that need to understand what we do. Um, it's our job as UXers to basically push the cause of the user of every single possibility, uh, every single possible opportunity. Uh, and the simplest way to do that is to tell everyone what you do. So, this isn't just, again, to that one person that you work with or sit next to, it's to people throughout the organisation who don't necessarily see anything about them and just shout at the rooms on the I always thought of, I was always trying to think of one good answer you give someone when someone comes up to you and say, Oh, what do you do? And you go round and round and it ends up with the can you fix my email question? <laughs> <laughs> so they, the thing is, there isn't one answer for it. You have different things to different people because they've got different uh, concerns. So if you've got a CEO or a head of department, uh, they can reduce risk and you are their tool for doing that for them. You've got uh, a business analyst, you're working with them to make the process of the project, etc. Developers want the details, interactions, and regions, how things are connected with each other. Design centers and tell you specifically how they connect to the developer. Um, and like marketing, brand, and life journey, something like that. So, all those people will need different things from you. Um, and as you sort of speak to other people around the business that you work in, you'll start to realise that what they do uh, 
uh, overlaps with the stuff you do. So, certain elements of somebody marketing might be tracking a user's journey through a number of emails that they send over a campaign. Without knowing it, they've done the user journey, they just don't call it that. Um, and all of a sudden, you sort of like see bits where they're already doing user centered stuff, they just don't realise that they are. Uh, when you find those people, you make them your friends. If you can take one of those people like that, they will love it. I haven't done that yet, I'll just sort of like find something else that is. Have regular catch ups with people, even if they're not on your team, you work in different places all together, just let them know what you're doing, what they're doing. Um, and you just sort of build a report, basically, with people who come to the back of business. Um, they can then be there to help you out and tell you vice versa, so they can lead you to back them up, you can be there for them. Um, and it's quite surprising if you just do one thing that makes their lives easier, they're so happy to do stuff for you at any point, that would be really useful. Um, these people will then become your sort of like allies in changing this amount of power. Um, another way to share your stuff is just to be more open with it. Um, as a developer, I used to go away, and disappear, and just do stuff in a little black hole, and think, oh, it's done, and then I have to speak to people and see what they But when you're doing design, you can't do that. You need to show people, because everyone's got opinion on design, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, or whether they're quite right to do it, they can have it because it's kind of a bit of a human nature thing about getting them to have an email or something that they want to do without some control over it. Um, so you kind of have to dispel the magic around what you've done to show everything you do. So you have to show them your work, the processes, uh, ask them for their opinions and their ideas because you've got them to be stuck in the space. It's brilliant. Um, make sure you take the suggestions on board because anyone can have a good idea. Doesn't matter if they are a student user who can't do it, but it's obviously there to be built. Um, I do stuff like this where I stick post it notes on journeys at home, which are its quote processes. God. So, but really, people got excited about that because it was stuck on the wall as post its. So you leave pins of post its there and they write up seeing things, which I think I took down before the so the photo which was one. Um, and when they walk past um, and show an address and say, well, what's this? Make sure you're sat right here, it's so just jump on them, and then just get them involved in it and get information from them. Tell them about it, get them involved. It doesn't matter if like, they're words in the call centre, too poor to work, they're not just pop up for something, like, okay, bottom of the milk or something. And uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden you've got inside with other people who do the other side of this on the phone all day, and they can give you insights that you've never got to find. So you, you find these people in, walking through your work, having their suggestions. By doing this, you're not just improving the quality of your work, but you're also giving them an idea of how they can do the same thing in their area of work as well. So you're introducing sort of approaches of working with others that they can adopt themselves. If they see something that works and get involved, they start to involve with other people outside of the so it starts to spread more nicely. Um, Putting people together from across departments changes other people's perception. So you may sit in one department and work there for 10 years or whatever it may be, and then you start speaking to other people around the business. And you begin to realise that it's not just your part of the thing, it's the only thing that there is. Um, it's that everyone else's input has, and their projects has an impact throughout everything. So everything's interconnected. Um, by extension of that, you sort of begin to open up to how their work affects people, not just inside, but outside the business as well. And that's where you sort of bring in the users and the people that's not as involved. So, you can start doing people in this closed mind is working in their own little silos into a more open market way of working. So, there's a little bit of a trick to get other people to it. Um, in order for others to embrace your culture, uh, you must embrace theirs. So, what I mean by this is, um, you can't just go in and go, here's a bunch of UX stuff and do it that way because that works and I know, because they'll just go, suck off for me, that's what I'm talking about. Because they've been doing their part of this business, but God knows how many more ways than you are. So, you can't just run in and do that, you're not thinking about it, that's the kind of badly designed way of doing it. So, you have to go in understanding how other people and other departments work and how they interact with each other. So, 
once you begin to understand how they work, you can sort of like begin to build a mutually beneficial relationship. So once you start to understand all that, you start to find a little ways where you can inject certain UX practices into certain areas. Um, and in the same way, you also get to benefit from the way they work. So if you take their common everyday business practices, which you can buzz itself and skill yourself, um, you can sort of just start to pull their, their sort of way of working into your way of working and you're slowly blurring all the divides in between you can drop something on someone just saying do it that way and it's a completely different way of working to what you used to. It's much harder for them to transition and you go, oh well if you just add this into what you've already got and I take your stuff and push it to mine, everything comes a lot more into the world and then easier to transition into your way of thinking. Um, Big caveat, everyone's different. Um, there's no one size fits all. Uh, every company is different, every team is different, every person is different. Um, now, the problem with that is everyone has different perspectives. Now, this office is always going to say, I always hate this because I didn't understand what it was. I thought it was all the very squirming and uh, it was dust and you get the water from um, Until I sort of looked up, and it's that little highlight bit there. It's the debate between parties having power. So, how many people have been in a group having a meeting with multiple different heads of departments or people just from different teams and they're just arguing about what's the most important thing? Anyone? Oh, there's loads of people who've had that. That man's put his hand up five times and that's not a record of his life. Right. Um, so when you have like these groups of people that come together to sort of like aim to solve them, to solve a larger problem, um, and they always bring their own interest perspective to the table because that's the issue that their area of interest to get there on the cow. Um, there's this old story of the pine nuts and the elephants. I'll have to change this because I think this talk with uh, a woman who did uh, while in more women in tech and it was like white men and black men. So I've changed it to mine. So I'm hoping. It's not a female version of Max. Nuns. So, we're going to go with Max as our gender movement. So, there's a bunch of blind ones, and they're all there to examine the other ones. I'm going to move back to the tail, and it's a row, and this one's a trunk, which is a branch of a tree. Uh, one goes aside, and it goes to the wall, and the ear is a branch of a tree. And then they come away from it and they compare those and then they learn that everyone completely disagrees about what the thing is in front of them. And then the wife of the explains that actually you're all right because that elephant has all of those aspects and you just can't see the big picture of it. And then everyone goes, oh, so we're all right and uh, we can go away and it's fine. So, what actually looks like conflict in reasons like that is just a lack of understanding of the big picture. So it's that larger puzzle that everyone's got a little piece of that they need to work together to solve. Uh, so usually it just falls to the people who can see that, uh, and that they have to change the perspectives of other people so, uh, to sort of get them to realise that they're all part of the same thing, but when all of them are working together, it actually makes a better solution. Uh, there is one thing they do all agree on. Uh, no matter what it is, nobody wants to buy the design because why would you cost loads of take loads of time? You just go and give it to the developers and do it. And that happens a lot. It's um, yeah, it seems the cost of the business uh, both time and money. Uh, now, Swift, if you think the design is expensive, it should cost about design. I know that. I'm sure pretty much all of you know that. Loads of people. So the problem we have is we have to convince the people who don't think it's worth it that it is. Uh, and the way you do that is by not selling the design. Um, which sounds really counterintuitive. But what they're actually looking for is a way to cut costs for the business, to make profits, to improve efficiency, and things like that. So instead of saying design as something that's going to cost them time and money, you sell what they're looking for. So you sell the amount of time and save for a development team, they create their own pattern line with the design system. Um, 
that if you build a user friendly self service order so they don't need all your customer support, you're saving customer support team and things like that. So, depending on who you need to convince, again, you uh, need to appeal to their needs. So, this is the agency uh, risk, etc. If you find the end of the project, uh, which will tap all those needs, uh, then you still have a place to keep on going. Um, but then you also need to help them understand what you're doing, so you have to create an understanding of the work. Um, again, taking that output to the audience, you're very ready to accept it. So, if I sat in a meeting somewhere, I was in the for like 15 years before I moved over to the US, and some people go, oh, we can do this, we can have this, and in my brain, I'm working out how everything changes. So, the database will do this, what we need to do, what we need to do, this, and that, and that, and that. In my head, I've got a solution, and I've just been working it through. No one has seen a proof, things like that. No, I don't know if anyone has seen a proof, things like that in the end, right? Am I just the only one who knows? I've got one of those things. No one else in that room, things like that. And it's really, uh, it takes a lot for me to sort of like come out of that and make things more understandable for the people who are around. Um, so you have some people who are in the school, you can give them a one page spec in text, and they'll go, yep, yeah, I've been with that, you've got built that lovely. Um, as you sort of tend to move up and fall from as high up as it were, uh, you tend to get from the technical to the more visual. So if you would like to go to, say, my line manager and go, okay, here's a sketch of how this works and how it's going to this, and I'll be going to build it. Um, CEO of the company wants exactly how it's going to look and exactly how it works before we build it. So always find to be very honest about the things on that one. Um, and there's no real way to, uh, to know who thinks in that way until you actually see them. So, as a guideline, as you've got a hierarchy, so other people want to see as much details as possible, so you know what's happening. Other people are happy to work with you. Um, to find out who those people are, you may need to find out, or if you've got those UX chapters that are around your site, you're just figuring out from them how other people think of the best ways to give work to other people. That's uh, now a lot of uh, target and reflection. Um, regardless of how much design gets done, design happens regardless. So it's the end result, uh, regardless of whether you've consciously acted upon the design or it's just happened somewhere else because no one's not paying attention. Um, what, we mean, what I mean by that is whatever comes out of the end and people see it, they'll also have the design that people have into it. It's relevant to what the end product is. Um, so to make things better, you have to do a lot of horrible things that you don't want to do. Or at least I don't want to do, mate. Um, do a lot of work outside of your general UX remit. So there'll be something that just says, oh, if you make this paper better, you can do some more stuff, and do stuff with it. Um, you're usually picking up projects in sort of full flow, just to add this little bit. We know that's not really how you do it, but you can frame this in a way that helps you teach the people you work with that this isn't how you do it. So you say, I can do this, but really, when we do this again, we should put all these elements in before we get to this point because we need to build something that works before we get to something that doesn't and try to turn how to fix on it. Um, so, Generally, you're playing a longer game. You're sort of trying to give a small taste to the of UX who hasn't been exposed to it. Um, and again, that sort of slowly builds up over time. It's uh, always changing that balance of power. So every step is like a little one in the right direction. So this is uh, marginal gains. Anyone heard of marginal gains? There's uh, some people are not here. Can't see the lights on. Who knows about marginal gains? Okay, so Dave um, Brailsford, head of uh, Sky, so I think, I think. basically said, uh, uh, so, so basically in five years, what we're going to do is we're going to win the Tour de France and we're going to do it clean with no drugs, and everyone laughed at him. And he did it in three years. So he did that by changing 1% on lots and lots and lots of different things to get 
gets a bit improved in over time. Uh, so they see it's based on every habit that you have, good or bad, is a result of many small decisions over time. So each of those little steps you take that like, amount to that larger stuff in um, that. This happens a lot to trouble on myself. Um, but a lot of people are sometimes just stubborn and unwilling to take your advice. So you know, they say, you want to introduce a bit more time for design and then against that and you've got well with that, it's been working my head. Um, sometimes you just have to get on with it and do it. Um, you have to be a little bit more understanding about it because uh, they will have their own reasons for what they're doing. Um, one topic that has changed significantly over like four kids now is a new year ago. We've really got children, but it's so easy just to just do what you like, then just get on with it, and then you can probably have it later. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you tell them not to do something, they're going to do it anyway. So don't really need to call you today, so don't really need to call you today, so don't really need to call you today, so oh, you've done it in pain, and then you've done it. So unfortunately, people still do that as well. That's fine. Um, so I noticed that there's always drivers behind uh, the reasons why I do this, so what are the factors that are playing for those people? Is it they have to hit a target of theirs, if they don't do this, they're going to not be able to make any more rent or whatever it is. So there's a ton of things around there, and luckily we're using user experience designers, so we should be able to ourselves in their shoes to be able to understand where they're coming from. Um, so although they're going to make their own mistakes, you need to be at the, there at the end to create some like makeshift solutions to help them get those things right. Um, you have to be a bit more pragmatic about your job, just have to get it done. Um, not everything you do is ever going to go in your case study portfolio or whatever it is if you ever get time to make it. Um, but what you're doing is you're always building your future. So whatever you're doing there to fix things is the first stage in making that better. Um, no projects ever truly finish on it, it's the fake phase two, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, eventually, humans do move on with these change, and that's what you pull the resources into that area. Um, changing other people's perspectives is really, really hard, and it's not something you can ever force on someone, it has to be better than there. However, changing yours is not, it's really quite easy for you to put yourselves in a other people's shoes because we're meant to do that on a daily basis to um, So there's no reason why you can't just use that same skill set to people that you work with. It's just that they know that you work with. Never cut up your true queens. Always be transparent with what you do. Always say you can use it for this first. We're doing this and bang on about it until everyone gets tired of it. Because people have actually learned the competition. So, everything so far we've got uh, is with the intention of swinging around to power more than one for the last years and so on. Um, so, changing all the foundational goals, we'll do the big bit really quickly. Um, so, to make all that stuff stick that you've done with the people that you've worked with, all those soft skills that you've used to get people on board, get involved in that sort of journey of integrating your own and business, you need to make all that stick. To do that, we need to align UX and business goals. Uh, show me the money. Um, speak about selling design and the different devices. This isn't too different, but we have to be a lot more definitive in what we tell the business because uh, they need to predict key markets and reduce their risk. So we know that UX delivers value. Um, I'm sure I'll we'll start about that a bit. Um, I don't think we've ever come across an example that says something was designed for users having negative impacts on what that came out of it. So we have to sell that value, so we already know that our business design serves the user. So it also has to sell the business. Um, without the business, there aren't the users. Without the users, there aren't the business. Just because you're talking about business, you're not a set out because you have to speak about the user, which the user's uh, perspective and everything. Um, it's not a negative thing to talk about conversion rates or other measurement metrics or anything else. Although you're doing your job by putting business and the user into the same 
So, in order to do this, we need to build a business case. And again, we're into Excel territory, which is not good. Um, so, if you've got a great idea and want that to be realised, you have to improve the past case work. So, you have to quantify the user experience, which is horrible because I like everything to be much more fluffy so I can improve anything so it works at the end. So, we have to find a set of metrics that we can use to uh, make our case, which is improving UX and obviously improving the useful business. Um, we're doing, again, what we said earlier, we're embracing like, the current business processes and uh, putting our work into that, so we're taking those templates and how we make uh, a business uh, plan for that area or some feature, whatever it may be, uh, and pushing the UX into that sort of process. So there's three things that we sort of now there's many of which are conversions, average order value, revenue from user, stuff like that. Uh, money saved, uh, so that's things like reduced costs in calls to the call centre, um, improved efficiency, stuff, business, whatever it might be. And then there are some non monetary ones, which again, the ones I like to know not improve them. So we have to concentrate on the top two, unfortunately. So, Really what we need is return investment. So how much we're putting into it, we need to prove that what's coming out of the other end is going to be working for the business. So we get a few stats. Every one dollar invested in this design is only between two and one hundred dollars. Uh, nearly eighty percent of software life cycle cost occur during the maintenance phase. Sixty percent of that makes it due to rework because the user requires not clear the beginning. I'm working on one of those right now. Gene, just sort it out before you get them doing work. Just figure out what you want to do first. It's not that. Anyway, there's some uh, very useful things. I've got a little uh, big link to a great white paper on uh, user experience and business case. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So, this is one of the calculations in there. So, um, we can prove uh, how much our UX work will benefit the business by. So in this case, in productivity, we can get the time saved, time to buy employee cost, time to buy the employees, and you get how much money saved. So if you, uh, two hours per week, 30 pounds per person, that's 500 employees, you save 30,000 pounds per week. Yeah, that's a nice number. Then you times it by 52 weeks, and you get one and a half million. One and a half million pounds a year, I could say you do. Uh, look, everyone's looking at me now. I can say one and a half million quid. Everyone bites your hand up immediately because there's numbers involved. Everyone loves numbers of business. So there's loads of examples in this. So I'll sort of cut it a bit short because uh, really good white paper. Uh, tons of stuff around metrics that you can use. Um, and tons of other stuff. And I'll upload this so and share it with everyone. I'll probably tweet out as well. So. Um, definitely go for and read it. There are there's tons of examples of it and a, a lot, much larger background. Um, again, as I like, there's more to it than money. Um, we need to pull in the same direction uh, as the company is moving in. So we have to align all the UX stuff we do to the business strategy. So in order to do that, you need to find a big behind the company. So to do that, you need to understand the company you're working for. So until that UX individual team becomes aware of exactly how their design impacts the business results, you can't really purposefully and repeatedly make those design decisions that support the company's success. Um, the good thing is we sort of know how to do that. We've got the money earned, the money saved, and some of the non monetary elements. We've got a whole bunch of calculation we can use to improve your business cases. Um, understand competition, this is pretty easy as well. Who announces digital stuff is already out there, so you can just go and use it and discover what they're doing. Um, as soon as one company makes some kind of innovation, you can choose whether to follow suit and see how to do it, with blocks or not. That's how people are just copying the big thing and want to make an interest in the place of solving the fact that they're not needed. Um, and then understanding the customer, luckily, that's a quite hard job. Um, so, Put ourselves in that. What we do, we can start customer competition company by the 
same kind of uh, UX processes that we do in order to serve our customers. So, all that's very well and good, but in order for it to be of any use, we have to communicate that effectively. So, again, it's sort of like that understandable documentation. Um, again, no one's really buying design, so we're selling them whatever they need to help them get their targets to help them along with the strategy. Um, so, document your wins, this is sort of linked them all together. Um, so, whatever you've done, what you've worked, hopefully you've been planning it and attracted it, even from beginning to end, you understand what's going to make the company, it's users, and you can show the improvements that you've made and the results and how that supports the strategic goals of the company. So, you can prove how much better the new product is for your users than the one you had before, and then therefore how much better it is for business. So, once you clearly tie those improvements of your UX process, uh, the team will it. You can't just stop there and point documents and that are going to be valid. You have to properly publicize it. So, this part is the most important part. Um, whatever you do, whatever you put in, if you do something well and it proves to be a success, um, tell them everyone about it. Don't stop telling everyone about it because until you become really annoying, people won't get it and won't grasp it. Um, so you have to do it ruthlessly. You have to do it. It doesn't matter how small it is. One time you think you change, this works first before we went to build something massive and then we've got massive more to get. It doesn't have to be like that. But you've got to change one thing, let it be more sign up. It's really something like If you can clearly map what you did to that success, put it everywhere, everywhere you can, put it in the space in there. Uh, it really helps to do that for me because I'm British, so I'm just going to be huge. Um, so the important thing for me when I'm trying to do is to remember that I'm not selling myself. It feels like you're trying to. What you're actually selling is the work that you and the people who work with have done and its success. So you're not basing on you, you're not being yourself, you're actually pushing for what you can create. And once you prove that UX works for the business, that starts to choose the business goal. So uh, once the business starts to understand what the people they use and their customers and what they rely on to be successful, that's the thing that makes them change. Um, it's a lot to do. It doesn't matter how slow you go, as long as you don't stop in the future. So, it's marketing games, and eventually, we'll get to the point where the plants have tips, it becomes your users that are the ones that are really in control. And that makes that change. So, hopefully, we'll get back to that. So, good luck. I'm back to you. Um, I was just wondering, in terms of, because you mentioned about business cases and how, and how you, need, you need to sort of sell the UX to the business, which is obviously people don't necessarily get it. And I was thinking, like, like that, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a UX person, I'm a data person, so I know I like myself. Uh, but that aside, um, I have, <laughs> I've, come, I've come across like some like UX tools, like you know, heat mapping tool. And um, from a data perspective, I, I think that does sell it a lot more. And I think it's a lot, it's a lot better in terms of telling the story. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are on these like heat mapping tools. Yeah, so it's it's kind of again like selling uh, the right thing to the right people. So if you're an Excel man, you love your numbers. If I can come back with statistics on. Here's, here's a heat map or something, here's how many clicks people have done on this area, and I can give you the data to support what I'm looking to do. That's, that's the thing that will drive you better because you're more interested in the numbers and say, uh, I don't know whether it's conversion you're after or whatever it may be, but to improve, like, why are most people clicking on this image over here when they should be clicking on the button? And if I can give you that information and then give you say, some alternative prototypes and show you what works and what doesn't, and then give you those numbers, isn't that what makes you happy? Do you, do you like that? Yeah. yeah. So it's tailoring, again, it's just that tailoring what you need to give to whoever it is and what they're, I suppose, passionate about. If you're, if you're 
obviously way more passionate about Excel than me. I'm sorry, I really shouldn't be hating on it, should I? It's really useful, I get it, I just don't like it. It's a bunch of boxes and numbers. It's, just, oh, it's too close to development for me, that's why I've got to go for that. So I'm going to drop into the time. It was not a problem, it's all easy. Well, I'm going to ramble, I'm going to stop there. But, but okay, I'll ask that. I'm going to ramble, I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ramble, I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask that. Hey, is there anyone else? Oh, also, it's been there. Hello. Oh, all your time. Oh, it is strategic compromise. Um, I can do that with my kids. I can definitely do that with work. It's like, yeah, yeah, you can have that. We'll chop it up. We are so much happy with those toys tomorrow. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's been all the time. Uh, and sometimes it's just like, I can't do it even with like a strategic problem. So if I, if I can see here, I'm going to have the initials on the map here. Sometimes it's like, I'm just going to have to consume a lot. So I'm going to consume a lot about that treatment and the projects of the house. And it's one of those things where, through experience, the end people do have to make their own mistakes. So it's not all the time. So if you can invest it in a good way, definitely try your hardest. So if, if someone goes, we we'll just change that whole the person box, oh, it's not the brand, we'll make it the brand. Okay, there you go. And then you can have a fine with the brand. So, so. But if you can then say, look, I'll make it happen for that, but we really need to do it this way, or we'll at least need to test that. Still getting people to test things before we've actually put them out, still getting my mind as far as I can go. So I mean, we really haven't got time for that. It's like, no, but really can you afford it? Because you've already launched this twice, and twice you've pulled it back. You want to do the same thing again? How long have you not learned from your mistakes? You've run into that door three times now. You've got your head over to the contact skill, you've still not learned. So, yeah, there are points where you really do have to really put down and get to a point where you think, you know what, I might lose my job in a minute, but I'm not giving up. So, yeah, there's each situation is, uh, yeah, you can tell about actually what you're not too much experience. <laughs> but, yeah, it's. Uh, it's always fun, but always sort of have to play up the situation as a whole. And was there something else? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm a partner of the round, I'm an author of the case study. case study, when you write case study, you can make a case study. It's not just like yourself, but it's all what you're doing. Yeah. case study, you can get to the final product. How do you need to have any of these points? So in terms of the show stuff, we're not doing too much for it. So. Um, it depends really, I mean you can show um, results of other cases, so, I mean it doesn't really have to be your work either. If you can show that a process works, that um, we went through this and we did this, we made a prototype, we tested it, we iterated on it, tested it again, we went through this process. Um, and instead of you getting one person out of the group clicking on this form, you now have a drop off of 2% instead of if you have literally the opposite number, you don't mind the market as well. And just one. If you can show, it's more about showing the process works rather than um, necessary individual elements. Um, I'd like to say that, again, there are people who need to know the exact details of how something works, so you'll get. Um, it's like the $300 million button on Amazon, so they change or whatever the project was. They change one button for something, and all of a sudden, the profits went through the roof because it was ridiculous. Um, showing a very specific example of how some things like that work is very difficult because you can't exactly imagine because those types of people want to see everything up front before you've even done anything. Um, you then have that. Difficult conversation. Well, I can show you that, but you need to give me the time you need to show you it. I'm not going to be too much hand managers. So you have to set it more and more perfect investment into that process. So if you let me spend four weeks, I will go and build something and test it and refine it until we get to the thing that we know works. And I can show you that here's what we currently have, here's what other people have, here's what we've done, and then it's you can never sort of pull things out of the net. You have to somehow get the time to generate results to show them how it works. Um, 
sometimes it's back to us, particularly some permission just go and do it without anyone knowing. Um, and then just go up and up on those things. Uh, they won't mind because some people, uh, small section people, I don't think people know. But most people go, oh, right, like, so you can actually prove to me that that will work in that case. So, yeah, let's go for it. And for that time you spend, you know, and that's what happened with the energy, you know, but that's, yeah, the only way you can do those kinds of things is by actually doing it in the right, 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 the